Hello fellow Space Engineers. Today we're going to continue our series on torpedo testing videos. But before that, I want to give a big thank you to Clay from Odysseus Gaming. He commented on some of my videos and he gave me a lot of useful tips on torpedo design. But not only that, he also gave me an example. He told me to check out his Carnage torpedo cruiser on the Steam Workshop. And so I did. And let me tell you one thing, this ship is amazing. It's not just that it looks menacing, it's also quite the ship killer. And why is that? Well, it has every single torpedo launching mechanism ever conceived. It has gravity launch torpedoes, it has torpedoes that are driven by the override on the thrusters, it has torpedoes that are actually attached to the fuselage as you can see, top and bottom. And it also has a ventral launch torpedo. The ship is well, very well armored. It also has a lot of redundancy on the thrusters. So even if it gets hit, it's not going to lose like any maneuverability or control over the ship. But perhaps the most important thing, and that's because I don't want to like extend myself on describing his ship because he already he has done it actually very well. I'm gonna put a link to his video in the description below so you can actually check it out and try it out on your own. Well, the thing that caught my attention is what is held here in the ventral launching tube. This really menacing looking massive thing. He calls it a nuke and let me tell you something, you'll see why he calls it a nuke. So stick around and you'll see why. Okay, as I promised, here we are with Clay's nuke. As you can see, it's a self-contained design in the way that it has everything that it needs to reach its target and destroy it. It has its own propulsion system. It has a really well-placed uh, attachment point. It has decoys and it has gyroscopes. The decoys are really important because they are going to keep the enemy closing weapon systems aiming at them and as you can see they're placed behind the torpedo so they actually if they miss the explosion doesn't touch the tip of the torpedo which is the sensitive part and that sensitive part is what makes it a nuke a cruise missile nuke like he calls it as you can see it has some let's call it like primer charges and then it has the big explosive charge contained in these two cargo containers. 625 explosive components. The idea is that when the torpedo impacts the target, this heavy armor penetrates, breaks through, then these primary charges explode, breaking the cargo containers, and then the follow-up explosion disperses all those little explosive charges throughout the interior of the ship, creating a devastating cluster bomb effect. So, one of the tips that Clay gave me about designing torpedoes is that the best way to defeat heavy armor is by shooting a heavy armor block at it, and that makes completely sense, completely total sense. It just goes through. I mean, in the kinetic damage alone, it's enough to actually, you know, damage some critical systems of a ship. So, as I told him, I actually made my own design based on his ideas, and this is it. This is Bullet Bill. You might remember him from the Super Mario Bros. series of games. You know that gigantic bullet that was shot at Mario or you know Luigi, whatever you were playing with. I decided to take this more like humoristic approach, just because it actually makes me laugh and I enjoy seeing like that gigantic bullet bill being shot at. So anyway, it's basically the same design. It doesn't have the decoys, it's like a more simplified version. Um, I decided to make it like this so it would fit in my current um, cruiser bow section, which I had to modify a little. I tend to build in odd numbers. I always leave a single block line, line of blocks in the middle and for his um, torpedo cruiser, Carnage, uh, Clay actually used um, even numbers. 
so it's just like a matter of preference. So I also decided to reduce the warhead load a little and try to you know saturate the target with many of these torpedoes so at least one of them goes through. So I simplified the design by just adding a single cargo container and a single warhead instead of two because also I was trying to make it uh, a, a bit faster so I could you know allow it to reach terminal velocity in a shorter distance so it has the same capacity it also the same contain um, it contains the same amount of explosives as half of clay torpedo so to enable bullet bill to fit in my cruiser I followed another one of his suggestions of clay suggestions and I made the actual walls of the torpedo tube with um, blast door components. This allows a big ship to actually go through the slides out easily. So as you can see here there's that tiny gap on each side that actually allows the giant ship to go through without colliding with the with the walls and destroying your own ship. And this is my original design. The way I had it planned is that I will shoot uh, four bullet bills first via gravity and then I will follow with four kinetic torpedoes and another four high explosive in the hopes of at least one of them would reach the target and destroy it or at least do some heavy damage. These torpedoes right here they turn out not to be that effective because they only have a single thruster. As you can see Clay's one has four and Bullet Bill has five gravity uh, you know, activated mass blocks. So the velocity in these ones were actually kind of like the worst thing about them because uh, eventually like even a frigate could destroy them one by one even if they were flying four at a time. So this is the design that I came up with to launch a torpedo following the example of clay from <coughs> the Carnage uh, torpedo cruiser. Okay, after designing Bullet Bill and trying it out, I felt this wave of inspiration and said, well, why not give this capacity to destroy a ship to a small fighter craft? You know, kind of like in modern navies or even like World War II navies when uh, the air launched torpedo kind of like began the downfall of the battleship as the main capital ship. So why not give a lowly small ship the capacity to destroy a large ship? So I moved on and went on to my designs of small craft launch torpedoes which are these ones. This is a design that I made in conjunction with my friend Ludwig. He actually designed the original warhead and part of the like the thruster package that you see here. This torpedo has full directional capabilities. So if in the future we get some kind of like a remote control block this torpedo could actually benefit from it because you could guide it any way you want. So anyway, th those like thrusters are just a way of future-proofing this torpedo design. I also went ahead and added this merge block at the forward end so we can exchange warheads. Uh, the idea behind this is to have like a like a probe warhead with antennas and beacons. I have like a low explosive warhead like this one or a high explosive warhead like this one right here the one in the middle even a kinetic one which would be made of full heavy armor which I still have to develop and also this decoy torpedo I kind of like took Clay's idea and separated it into two torpedoes to give the kind of like saturation strike uh, more of a chance to actually penetrate through the ship's defenses so at least one of the torpedoes goes into the ship's defense network and destroys it. So the idea is to shoot these torpedoes first and then followed by the high explosive ones. 
at very close proximity. If you allow a gap that is too big in between them, then these uh, decoy torpedoes either like fly through or pass through the enemy ship, and then the ship continues to engage these ones as the nearest target. So you won't get the, let's say, the killing blow. You only like distract its guns for a few seconds. But the idea is to fire the decoys closely followed by these high explosive ones. Taking into account that any explosion that actually like hits this decoy, it's just far enough so it doesn't set off the explosives in this one. So it's kind of like a tricky way, but in the end you, you end up like getting the perfect timing to do it and it's, it ends up being kind of like simple when you actually uh, have it in your muscle memory. So I decided to take this design of like an air launch torpedo and not just give it to the bombers. I also decided to install it on my bigger ships as I will show you in a second. As I explained in a previous video, this is my modular rocket launching system. The idea is that one player controls each module so they can select from which side of the ship to fire a broadside from. This was before the toolbar configuration update. But I still I kinda like the idea of having like you know a crew member for each station. So I decided not to change it. This is the base that I use to create a torpedo launching rack that I will show you in a moment. So I took these torpedoes that I was, I was telling you before, the ones that were designed to be mounted under the wings of bombers. This merge block would go attached to the underside wing pylon on the bomber and that's the way to release the torpedo. So that created a number of problems, as you will see. Because when a merge block detaches, it pushes the torpedo away from the direction that it's pointing at. So in this case, the merge block is pointing upwards, it will push the torpedo downwards. So for the design that I was talking you, that I was telling you about before, this launching uh, torpedo launching racks, I took the rocket launching module removed four of the rocket launchers and fitted them with a hybrid uh, rotor. If you don't know what a hybrid rotor is, um, I will put also links in the description below. It's a trick in which you actually destroy the top part of a big ship rotor and then create a small ship rotor on top, then destroy the bottom part of that small ship rotor and then you push the top part of this last one and they attach like magnetically as if they were a merge block and then you can proceed to construct or to build a small ship on top of a big ship so this is what I did to create my torpedo launching like module rack on a big ship so I attach the torpedoes here sideways and then fire them at the target frigate all the way there the problem with that is that as soon as the torpedo detached it actually banged against this wall section here and when it came out it had such a big dispersion that it had to use as you can see two modules containing four torpedoes at a time only to achieve one possible hit so the dispersion and the waste of torpedoes was unacceptable and that what that's what actually drove me to continue uh, on my designs as I will show you in a few seconds so this is the final design that I came up with as you can see this is the earlier one with the top detachable merge block I just twisted the battery removed that top merge block and moved it all the way to the back in the process I actually lost the control the control thrusters so these torpedoes are only meant to fly in a straight line which is fine because they do have a gyroscope so let me show you how they mount on a bomber okay this is the alligator torpedo bomber it was actually the second small ship that I ever designed 
um, it's been upgraded ever since. The idea was to give it like a kind of like a World War II uh, bomber feel to it. So that's why it has a, a tail gunner. It used to have like a single Gatling gun here. It was really hard to control. So I decided to upgrade it with the new player um, control turret. Well, anyway, what you want to see is the torpedoes. So I added these four kind of like fan looking things, uh, merge blocks, to the top and bottom of the wing. So when the torpedoes actually detach, they move forward instead of moving backwards. And the idea is to detach the top ones first, followed by the bottom ones. I know you are like origin for a demonstration, so let's blow up that frigate over there. I have to say that it is important to stay at least one kilometer away from the enemy ship because as soon as you get into the 800 meter range you become the target of the Gatling guns and the missile turrets. So let's begin the sequence. We're gonna activate the thrusters, then we're gonna release the top ones and then we're gonna release the bottom ones. Okay, let's go. Be prepared for some heavy lag when the torpedoes actually impact the ship. And there it is. Let's see how long it takes for the game to actually catch up. It seems that the game froze, but it's just trying to calculate all those little explosions inside of the frigate. And I guess I kind of like made it worse because uh, I think actually two torpedoes impacted. So let's give it a little waiting time. Calculating, calculating. I think I'm gonna fast forward this thing. There it is. You can see how it's like eating up the insides and the outsides of the ship. I think that that was the second explosion, the second torpedo that hit. And the bridge is completely gone. And you can see the inside compartments. Maybe it actually broke in half. Whoa! Okay, let's check it out up close. Wow. Apparently one of the missiles went astray and like destroyed the cockpit. And well, I guess the gyroscope is part of my bomber. Or torpedo, anyway. Let's fly all the way there. There was one occasion in which I actually broke the ship in half. And this is an evidence of what I was telling you before. In the earlier series about torpedoes, heavy armor can withstand the explosion but it actually cannot protect the lighter contents like the lighter blocks and you see all these like teeth looking you know damage like serrated edges these are actually the tiny explosions all around 
the insides of the ship. The blast doors are intact. As expected. Well, those are the effects of Clay's nuke. As you can see, it does look like a nuclear explosion actually like tore through the ship. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed the series and take care.